Maybe it's time you learn something about me that you didn't know before. Maybe you've never noticed it. Maybe you can't tell that from the little cell phone screen that you're watching this on. I am a very hairy guy and I'm not ashamed of that at all. It's who I am, it's in my DNA. I'm a very hairy guy. I am hairier than most men in my social circle that I see walking on the street when I go out during my lunch break at work and there's like hundreds of other men. I'm one of the hairiest by default and I always have been. I've always, I mean, as a teenager, I had a full beard. I had 16, age 16, full beard. I can take you back to 20 years ago. Where was I 20 years ago? I was in Ecuador on a mission trip with my church. And it was one of those things where like, you know, the, we all had to take a shower, kind of like open shower, like the size of this room. And like, like basically you're just like, okay, like guess we're all gonna take a shower now. This is awkward, you know? Noticeably, everybody mentioned that I noticed I was the hairiest guy in there at age 16. And there were guys in their 20s that were on this trip. I mean, it's not like I hurt my feelings. Oh, no, I'm a hairy guy. I see nothing to be ashamed of, you know? So, but by the time I was in my 20s and I was in college, that's when I started getting a pair of clippers and like doing the whole manscaping thing, you know? I'm a hairy guy. I mean, you can see my arms and I know compared to Robin Williams, this is tame, but undeniably that's just it's just hair and even if I were to trim that it'd still be all over my hair my, my hands and my fingers and my knuckles you know for me the only place places on my body where there's just not luscious hair is the palms of my hands and the soles of my feet and then on the sides of my hips there's like that much just a, a bald patch on both of my hips and that's it, I mean, everywhere. On my nose, there's little hairs on there. Like everywhere on my body, my ears. I'm just a very hairy guy and I do my best to maintain it. But I just remain completely unapologetic about it. I don't see why I should be ashamed of that, you know. I do my best to make it not obvious. But man, I am, I am so hairy and hey, since this is a channel that largely talks about DNA test results, now that I'm like two and a half minutes in the video, I want to bring this part of it up. And, you know, certain races aren't really hairy. Like people of Asian descent, people who are Asian, typically those men are not hairy. Okay. And once again, uh, here's another story about <laughs> when I was in Korea, I went to, I was with my students there. And they all wanted to go like in Korea to have those bathhouses. Well, guess what? I was the only white man in the midst of hundreds of Asian men. And they all pointed out the fact that I had a lot of hair on my body. They, they would come up to me and like rub my arm, if nothing else, just to feel the body hair that I had. And that's when I learned, okay, so Asian men are fascinated by body hair because they don't have it. And I also noticed while I was over there that typically they... Asian men don't go bald as quickly as white men do. So that was back in 2003, 2004, I started putting that together and realizing there's somewhat of a connection between how hairy a guy is, especially even when he's starting to, to develop body hair and be able to grow a beard in his teen years, like me growing a full beard. There's somewhat of a pre predictability on baldness and how much body hair you have. So. But to break that down, what's very obvious to me is white men are most likely to go bald sooner in life. Asian men are least likely to go bald sooner in life. Asian men are also least likely to be able to, often, many of them can never grow a full beard. And if they can, it's pretty thin. They, they don't have much hair on their body. But again, they're less likely to go bald. So there's definitely that trade-off. So, you know, as I look at my own DNA test results, you know, and if you want to see the exact one, just go to the channel trailer for, for my video channel here and I'll give an exact breakdown in a nicely edited video. Um, but for the most part, I like to just reduce it to, to the main components. And that is about a third of my DNA is, is Iberian, Spanish. About a third of it is German, French, and Dutch. And then 21.6%, I can always remember that number, is Native American via Mexico. Mayan, Aztec, you know, that sort of thing. So it's like nearly a quarter of my DNA 
is technically Asian descent, the Native Americans who came over through the you know, Bering Strait and all that good stuff a long time ago. So, but then most of my DNA is going to be coming from Europe, right? So where exactly does this hairy gene come from? I don't, as far as the balding gene, I mean, look at that. I don't know if it's because my hair's short and I got a cow, like some people said that. Maybe it's a bald spot. I don't know. Yeah. I just can't believe I'm 37 and still have as much hair. I, ne <laughs> I never expected this. So it's like, okay, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll enjoy it while it's here, but what does it really serve anyway? <laughs> if you were watching me a couple months ago, I was completely shaving off all my hair and I loved it better actually. Hair doesn't mean anything to me. In the same way, I don't care if I go bald. I definitely don't care that I'm so hairy of a guy. Uh, it's funny because I have a uh, Chewbacca onesie. Uh, and uh, if you've seen all my videos on both channels, you've seen me wear it before as a joke. But it's almost like I feel like sometimes when I put that on or whatever, I'm like, this isn't really that much different than my own <laughs> body on how hairy I am. But it does make me wonder, like, are there certain maybe nationalities that are more specifically hairier than others that that hairy gene comes from but as white people our men just so mixed up to begin with that we don't really know where that gene came from because to differentiate you know i can set aside european men as being men who are generally at least comparatively speaking to asian men by default decently hairy more prone to lose their hair sooner in life but i can also look at jewish men who are not European. I know you can say, well, what about Ashkenazi Jew? No, I mean, but just Jewish men in general. It's just Jerry Seinfeld, you know? I think he'd probably have about as much arm hair as I do. And if I'm lucky, I'll have as much hair as I do when I'm in my 60s. Probably not. It doesn't matter anyway, because again, I don't care about hair anyway. Either way, fine. But then, and then compare that to any Middle Eastern man. When I think of a Middle Eastern man, I typically think of a guy who is hairy and is more prone to lose his hair sooner in life. I can also think the same thing about Indian men. So it's not just white men, because when I think of some, I mean, Indian people, Indian men don't refer to themselves as white. You know, Aziz Ansari, I've seen every episode of his show on Netflix, Master of None, and he regularly refers to himself as a brown man. So where does the hairy gene come from? I'm, wow, this is almost an eight minute video. I don't regret a word I've said, but I do now hand you the mic. Do you think that there's a certain nationality or certain certain place that that hairiness comes from? Because I am definitely the hairiest YouTuber that you subscribe to. Give me any kind of direction on that right here.